Hey everybody, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com and welcome to a new series I'm going to be doing called Understanding Lightroom. Now before we jump in, I'd like to take a second to explain what this series is all about. The idea came about after having several conversations with people at this year's Photoshop world, which I just got back from. And what I learned during those conversations was that although many people understand how to develop and edit pictures in Lightroom, quite a few people don't really know what the capabilities that Lightroom has as a management and cataloging tool and what the best practices are to use Lightroom to its full potential. And that's what this series is really all about. Simple, short, easy to understand videos that help you take advantage of Lightroom and its benefits. And with that, I'd like to start by talking about one of my favorite features in Lightroom that most people don't know what it does or just simply ignore it, Adobe DNG. Now, most people will have seen this import dialog box when they've gone to import their images into Lightroom and they'll have seen this option here saying copy as DNG and copy. Now, most people that see this have no idea what it does or what it even means, so they just ignore it and they use the copy option instead. And frankly, I'm not surprised by that. Adobe really hasn't done a good job at explaining what DNG is to their mainstream user base when they open up Lightroom for the first time which is a shame because I think it's one of the best single features that they've produced in recent memory. Now I want to take a sec and just explain and give a quick overview of what DNG is and why you should be using it over your camera's standard RAW format. Without getting too technical, DNG is Adobe's attempt at creating an open source RAW format that's future proof. One of Adobe's concerns a few years ago was that with so many RAW formats coming from, to the market from various camera manufacturers, there will most likely become a time when a camera manufacturer will stop supporting their proprietary RAW format and in favor of something new. And that situation could potentially leave users with no future support of their RAW images. DNG was Adobe's answer to this issue. Another benefit that is touted most often when it comes to DNG is the smaller file sizes. But some people who are thinking about switching to DNG think that in order to decrease the file size, it actually has to compromise on quality. And this simply isn't true. Adobe has just worked out a better way to compress the raw file to fit more information into a smaller file size. Let me give you a bit of a visual representation to help illustrate what Adobe has done. Imagine you had two identical pieces of paper. You took one of those pieces of paper and you scrunched it up into a bowl. And took the other piece of paper and neatly folded it over a few times. DNG is the folded piece of paper. It's the same file, just engineered better for a smaller file size. But the thing that I really like about DNG is that rather than having a separate XMP file along with your RAW file when you've made edits to your image, DNG actually holds the XMP file right inside the DNG file, which makes moving the file much easier. Let me show you what I mean. Here on my desktop, I have two of the same image. One is Canon CR2 file type. The other is Adobe's DNG file. Now what first I want to do is I want to right click on the CR2 file and go down to get info. And here you're going to see it says 13.4 megabytes. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this DNG file, right click, get info. And here you're going to see it says 11.7 megabytes. So straight out, it's nearly saved me two megabytes in size. Now that doesn't sound like a lot when you're dealing with a single file, but when you think about having a catalog of thousands of images, you're going to save yourself a ton of space. But this next feature is what really sold me on DNG. If I'm going to, I'm going to go over here to my CR2 file and I'm going to double click on it, open it up in camera roll. Now I'm just going to make a really big exposure change to make it really obvious that I've done something to this image. I'm going to click done. Minimize this, and you're going to see here that it's created an XMP file. Now, this XMP file is what holds that exposure change and actually links it back to this original CR2 image. So, if I click on this again, open it up, you're going to see it shows the exact same exposure change. So, let's minimize this for now. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this XMP file, drag it over to the trash. Now watch what happens to the CR2 image when I open up in camera raw again. Back to the beginning, all over again. It looks exactly the same as it was in the very beginning because it doesn't have an XMP file linked to it. This makes for a really big problem when you're dealing with a lot of images and you ever have to move them anywhere. Now I want to close this up and make a change to the DNG file. 
Now let's double click on the DNG file, open up in camera roll. Now let's make a really big different change. Let's really crank up the saturation here. And I'm gonna click done. Now you notice it hasn't made any extra files or anything like that on the desktop because the XMP file and that, and that saturation change rather is held within the DNG file itself. So if I double click this up open again, that saturation change is still there. Let's even crank up the vibrance as well. Really show what this is doing. I'm going to click done, close this up. Again, no change. Open up in camera raw. That same change is there. And that's the big difference with DNG. Okay, but some of you are probably now saying, but I don't have Lightroom. How do I go about converting my images to DNG? Well, don't worry, Adobe have got you covered. What you want to do is you want to go over to the Adobe website, adobe.com. You're going to go into the search bar here on the top right. You're going to type in DNG. Now it's going to come out with a drop down menu for DNG converter for Windows or DNG converter for Mac. Now I'm going to click on the Mac since that's what I use. And it's going to go ahead and open up this page to, for you to download a free converter utility. Right here, you click on Proceed to Download, and that gives you the, a file to start converting your files to DNG absolutely for free. Adobe have given this out to help support this DNG file format. Well, I hope I've been helpful for you and helped explain a little bit about what DNG is and why you'd really benefit from using it. I've been Craig McCormick from DestructivePixels.com. See you later.